So I think we move on to our second topic. So the funny Japan, one. Yeah, hmm? The funny one. Yeah, the funny one, the funnier one. <laughs> oh yeah, so Japan's own private reefer madness. Uh, so marijuana and drugs have been kind of a hot topic uh, lately uh, for various reasons in Japan. So mm -hmm. in a lot of other countries, I'll take my own country, the United States as an example, uh, marijuana is started to become kind of regarded as sort of in a different class uh, as other drugs. Uh, it's viewed more, I think, as a soft drug because it's less physically addictive. There's a, a lot of states in which it's legal in the United States. And I think that's a trend that you're kind of seeing around um, the world as well. So it's kind of regarded in a different categories, for example, like cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines. Um, that's not true in Japan. In Japan, uh, there's kind of no distinction with illegal drug use and all drug use outside of the few legal ones, such as alcohol, tobacco, and what have you, uh, is strictly forbidden. It's not only illegal, um, but there's a lot of social ostracism that goes along with being caught, well, you know, being caught by the police for any reason, I would say, yeah. um, but particularly for the use of drugs. Uh, it's, you know, seen as, you know, having ties to the Yakuza and the underworld and just being very like anti-social and anti-societal. And so what happens that we see a lot is that celebrities who get caught with drugs because celebrities do drugs, shocking but true, film at 11. Celebrities who get caught taking drugs and who get exposed in the press can basically see their careers kind of disappear overnight and it's an uphill battle for them uh, to get back on board. Uh, mm -hmm. So an example that I first wrote about was uh, the musician and celebrity um, Pierre Taki who was um, arrested, I believe it was cocaine possession. Uh, and it was that was really striking because his records were taken off the shelves. There was a manhole covered in his home city. They quickly removed it the next day. Um, I was I was a, a, a listened for a while to a TBS radio program called Tama Musubi, in which he was a recurring, one of the recurring MCs on that show, uh, and he was gone. And they're like, yeah, hope you hope you come back when you get better. Uh, but he was like off the show, and we never heard of him uh, after that. Mm. And then more a little more recently, Sabajiri Erika, uh, the actress, uh, was arrested for MDMA possession. Um, she was uh, slated to star in a period drama, which was almost done filming, and they cut her from the drama and they reshot her scenes which was like incredibly expensive, but it was like kind of the level of ostracism that we're talking about here. Yeah. And then recently, uh, Is uh, Isia Yusuke, uh, he, uh, another actor, he recently starred in the show uh, Miman Keisatsu, uh, which had a belief had just finished airing. And I'm, I'm sure the producers of the show are praying to the gods for their good luck timing on that one. Um, but he was arrested on marijuana possession. And uh, absolutely no difference here. Um, he was, mm -hmm. you know, basically like lost all of his like sponsorships, lost his acting gigs, and just had like huge bashing in the Japanese media. And this time, however, I think we've seen a lot more, um, a lot more people like kind of um, push back on this kind of ostracism toward anybody. I think who gets caught with. Uh, who who gets arrested um, for drug use because as of some others have pointed out um, it creates a really big burden even for like ordinary people who want to mm. get better and perhaps like you know rehabilitate or like use in moderation there's like kind of no avenue for, forward for them you know they, yeah. they're kind of cut off from society which along with like the damage of actually being arrested just kind of doubles or trebles the damage that they're suffering okay. and so uh, like after Kobuzuka Yosuke uh, came out and actually defended Isaya and told people basically, hey, don't you have bigger things to worry about? Aren't there worse people in the world than a guy who smokes marijuana? Mm -hmm. And a lot of other people came out and who were like li were Japanese living abroad were saying, hey, you know, in Canada, if you know you said marijuana was as dangerous as heroin, you'd get laughed uh, out of the room. So it's yeah, all a really interesting situation. Here, go ahead. Yeah, and and not only that, like the way that they ostracize people who use drugs or marijuana or any whatever. Like if they, I will keep saying it, and I will say it every single time. Like if they treat it the same way, like people who are in possession of marijuana, not only using it, but just having it. Mm -hmm. If they treated them the same way as they treat, or like if they treated rapists the same way as they treated them, mm -hmm. 
the things would be like so much different. Like you cannot compare it at all. Like one you will protect because it's like, oh, but who knows what happened. And the other one is like, he was arrested in suspicion of having or looking at marijuana. He thought it's, about marijuana. Yeah, it's like he looked at the color green. <laughs> it is so bizarre. Yeah, it's a good point. Where was this outrage for like the father who raped his 12-year-old daughter, for example, or right. for the man who attacked Ito Yeah. 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 Yeah, it seems very uneven. So just another, like, go ahead, you know, go ahead. Like just for the suspicion of having it, it's not even that they know that they did drugs or that they had marijuana. Mm. It's just the suspicion is enough for mm. them to be arrested. From a slightly funnier side, so amid all this discussion, it was kind of, I think, perfectly timed. So Wakayama uh, Prefecture, uh, came out <laughs> with an anti-marijuana comic, and Noah Oscar wrote about this for Unseen Japan recently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a comic called Man Manga for Edification Regarding Preventing Drug Abuse, and it focuses on a, a young woman who begins to take marijuana, and her life completely falls apart. And what's funny about this, number one, is that they're, they're just like, complete falsehoods about marijuana and its effect like, like anybody who's like ever taken marijuana will read um, this manga and be like what the hell are these people talking about so for yeah. example implication in the manga that um kids were take or smoking marijuana because it improves their studies he's never improved my studies i can tell you that um or that they lost their appetites when they started using that again yeah. i think con Contrary to everybody's experience, like for me, what like what really hit me of that of the manga, like I was browsing it this morning, and like there was this scene right where they go to arrest her, and then the family is like her whole family gets really mad at her, right? And trigger warning, violence. The father he just smacks her across the face, mm -hmm. as if the suspicion or just even the actual consumption of marijuana warranted physical violence as if that would ever be an appropriate reaction ever exactly like, why, why would you even depict that but it was so violent like the image was like so over the top and then the mother tried to commit suicide it, i don't know it just it sounds like so over the top like that is not not even the hardest drugs Right. Like, warrant this. Yeah. I mean, it was depicted as like kind of, you know, pushing her to the doldrums and ruining her their life when the fact is that a lot of people smoke marijuana and continue on with their regular teenage or adult lives just fine. And even if they do smoke, it's like it's none of your business. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you, I come back to the same thing with marijuana. It, so long as alcohol is legal. You know, yeah. where is the sense? Because in so many ways, alcohol is a it's much more. Worse. Yeah, it's the, and and I'm a drinker. I like to drink. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't deny that to myself or anybody. But you know, the fact that marijuana users you know, undergo like a completely different stigma for a drug that I, as a drinker, will freely admit is less harmful <laughs> than alcohol is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't get it. Like there are so many things I do not understand about. Yeah. And like also like smoking, like normal cigarettes, it's mm -hmm. also okay. And that is yeah, and, also bad for your health. Yeah, and until recently in Tokyo, in public, in restaurants, okay. transmitting secondhand smoke to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and harming other people's health. Yeah, and I don't know, like even people were saying like, yeah, but what about the children? And then people were like, oh, well, parents shouldn't bring the children to a restaurant. And it's like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Are we gatekeeping restaurants? Yeah, you, you shouldn't bring your family to a famidesa. <laughs> I just, I just had, I just like, I just had like goosebumps all over my body right now because I got stuck. <laughs> but the social death aspect of the manga was interesting, especially given that it was an officially sanctioned publication. Yeah, so that was another thing that uh, Noah really dug into, which is that you know, basically like 
their lives were ruined and the family was ostracized. So it's that's something you see come up a lot that gets treated in Japanese fiction as well. And you see a lot mm. in dramas is this ostracism that people go through. Like when somebody is accused or convicted of a crime in the family, the whole family basically takes the punishment, you know, they get their houses vandalized, yeah. circulars are put up, you know, you know, calling them like, you know, murderers or drug users um, or Yakuza or whatever. And that happened to the woman in this comic. And actually one of the uh, users uh, who, uh, tweeted about this that uh, Noah translated Kataoka Yusuke said that rather than saying marijuana is terrifying, this manga says Japanese society is terrifying. And it's absolutely right. Well, what amazes me about that too is that again, I see that there were in not this current drama season, I think it's now like two drama seasons. I don't know. I've lost all sense of time with the pand pandemic. Um, you know, but in one drama season, there were two like really popular dramas. So there was mm -hmm. um, Theseus and Nufune, The Ship of Theseus, which was about a young man whose father was convicted of murder. Their family was completely social, socially ostracized. And the whole show was him going back in time to basically like clear his father's name and you know prevent wow. that from happening to their family the other one uh was um shiranakte ikoto um things that are best left unknown uh which was a drama about a woman who worked as a reporter and who discovered the true identity of her father and discovered that her father uh had been convicted of murder uh, for which he had wow. been released in prison several years ago but the whole drama was about her also having to come to terms with you know being socially ostracized over that so it's a theme that you end up seeing you, you keep seeing a lot happen in dramas and in fiction um higashino keigo wrote a whole book about it tagami mm. which yeah. is about a guy a kid who has to keep moving from town to town because his brother's in jail and every mm. time everyone finds out he basically like loses his jobs loses his friends gets hounded and has to completely pick up and move his life yeah. so it gets treated over and over again but nothing really kind of seems to change about it yeah it's like the crime of one becomes the crime of the family unit and that right. is the same thing that like is tied with the surnames mm. like two people like a family needs to have the same surname because it's the same identity mm. so if somebody messes up everyone messes up which is so messed up yeah. Well, at least users also got some chuckles out of the manga. I, it, it did one of these things that uh, you see like manga and anime do a lot, which I I love this with, because uh, it's so easy to do with Japanese names and with kanji, <laughs> is <laughs> making names making names that are related, <laughs> that are like obviously like puns. Yeah. Um, so the friends in this manga were called um Maki-chan and Yoko-chan. So Maki, the Ma is you know, Asa, it's the same character um, that's in um, Taima, marijuana. Mm -hmm. And Yoko, the first Yo mm -hmm. is the is Ha Please. or Leaf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so like, it's like, could how, you be how... more in the nose? Yeah, it's like it's a little too... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little subtlety would be in order. Uh, like the whole manga was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I don't know how that got published by an official, like government site. You know how 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 do you do that? I'm always mystified by these things that come out, and you sit back and you realize this went through dozens of people, and everyone was like, "Yeah, yeah. ship it." Yeah, let's do this. It's yeah. great. Yeah. I wonder what the average age of the people serving serving in government. I'm gonna go with sixty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with 60. Yeah, I saw a few comments to the effect of, ah, yeah, that's Wakayama for you. 